Hi, in this video, we are going to set up CI pipelines for Dockerized PHP applications with GitHub and GitLab. As preparation for this video, I recommend that you watch the previous videos of the tutorial series to understand the fundamentals. What do we actually mean by CI or by continuous integration? So in our case, we want to build CI Docker images. We will start them via Docker Compose decrypt any secrets that we might have in the repository, run all the QA tools, and run all the tests. We can actually do all of that locally already, but there are some differences between the environments. So locally, we want to share the code base with a bind mount at runtime, and on CI, we want to bake the code base into the image at build time, because that's closest to a later production environment. Locally, we're going to use all images, and on CI, we only use the application, Redis, and MySQL images. Locally, we didn't use a password for our GPG key, and we will on a CI system. The local environment is, well, used to run the code locally, whereas on CI, we want to be able to run it locally as well as remotely, for example, on GitHub Actions and on GitLab pipelines. In the local environment, we have a Docker image that doesn't have the code base built into the image, but instead we will create a Docker container from the image and then bind mount the code base from our host system. On CI, the code base will already live in the Docker image. So when we start the Docker container, the code base is already live. But let's take one step back and understand what it actually means to have an environment called local or an environment called CI. In our example, we will use a make target make init to define the environment. And that will create a shared environment file with the corresponding values. So for example, the environment. And this environment will then be used by other make targets as a prefix for the docker compose command. So in the end, it's really just a more convenient option to define the environment for the whole application instead of having to suffix it as a variable behind every make target. Okay, but how exactly does the environment translate into the Docker build? Let's try it out to see it in action. We start by running make init with the environment CI and the tag latest. That will create a shared environment file and the file itself now contains the two variables. When we now run make docker build with the n option to see the target without actually executing it, then the docker compose command is actually prefixed with env equals ci and tech equals latest. So those variables will be available to the docker compose command. Let's run the actual build. And take a look in the corresponding docker compose file that is being used to understand where the environment variable is used for the build. We're first gonna use it in the image name. We pass it as a build argument, and we also use it to define the build target. Taking a look at the corresponding Docker file, we can see that the build target exists and it copies from another stage in the Docker file, from the stage code base that is defined just above, and this stage is based on the base stage that we already know from the previous tutorials. The stage starts with copying over the composer.json file and the corresponding log file, and then executes a composer install to download all the dependencies. Afterwards, it copies the whole repository in a directory called codebase, so it copies everything that we see on the left side. Then the vendor directory of the previous composer install is moved into the vendor directory of the full code base. And finally, this code base is copied from the stage code base to the final application path. This looks a little complicated, but it actually makes sense once we understand layer caching. Docker images are built by creating so-called layers and each run instruction will create a new layer. These layers are cached between builds so if a layer doesn't change, then it doesn't have to be recreated. And that speeds up the build quite a lot. By first installing the composer dependencies, this layer only needs to be executed if the underlying composer JSON or composer look file changes. Whereas the run command below is based on the full code base. So this layer will change whenever anything in the code base changes. When I said that all files of the repository are being copied over, then it wasn't quite correct because we also use a file called docker ignore. 
And this file kind of works as our git ignore file by excluding certain files from being passed to Docker. You can see that it actually includes a lot of the rules that we already know from the git ignore file. For example, we don't want our .env file to appear in our Docker images. We also said that we don't need all the services that we run locally, but only the MySQL, Redis and application services. And we'll make that possible by assembling special Docker Compose configuration files that are specific to the CI environment. First, we need to understand that I have modified the Docker Compose configuration files to contain information that is specific to a specific environment. Instead of using a single file, I will now use multiple files that contain the full configuration. The first file is called docker-compose.local.ci and it contains all the information that is relevant for the local environment as well for the environment. In this case, it contains the services application, MySQL and Redis, but the application service contains much less information than it did for the local environment. So when we take at the corresponding local configuration file, then we can see that the application service also contains a lot of information that is only relevant for running the application locally and being able to run it via PHP Storm. The local file also contains the other services like Nginx, PHP Worker and PHP FPM. But how can we make sure that the correct files are chosen when we invoke a make target? Let's take a look in the Docker MK sub make file. In here we will find variables that define the Docker Compose configuration files. Depending on the environment, we will choose either the files for the CI environment or the ones for the local environment. And those files are then appended to the Docker Compose command. We can also see that in action by once again show the recipe without executing it. And we can see that the Docker Compose command does actually use the local.ci.yaml file and the ci.yaml file when executing the command. Just to double check, we are gonna execute the docker config command normally and see that it contains only the three services that we expect, Redis, MySQL and application. Let's start the docker setup and check the running services. And indeed we only see application, Redis and MySQL. Now we wanted to run the tests, but we see a lot of failures happening here. Taking a closer look, it seems like our MySQL based tests are failing as well as a new test that checks the encryption feature of our code base. Interestingly, the tests for MySQL won't fail if we wait a couple of seconds. So running them again will only show the encryption test failing. So what's going on here? As it turns out, the MySQL container is already up and running, but the MySQL service in the container is not. And we need to wait for a couple of seconds until the service becomes available. We will solve that problem with a special configuration for the MySQL service. We have defined a so-called health check that defines a test command. So this command will be run in order to ensure that the underlying service is healthy. So if we restart the Docker setup and show it via Docker PS, we can see that the status of the MySQL service is up less than a second, health starting, which means that the health check isn't successful quite yet. When we run the same command a couple of seconds later, the status has changed to healthy. We will use that status to determine if MySQL is up and running. And for that, I've created a small script, wait for service.sh. And this script will check the status of a Docker container and it will check if the status is healthy. And if so, the script ends. Otherwise, it will run in a loop for a fixed number of tries. So let's try it out by restarting the Docker setup then running the script to wait for the MySQL service to become healthy and then immediately execute the tests. The Docker setup has started and we are now waiting for the MySQL service to become healthy. After 11 seconds, the MySQL service is up and running. Then we can execute the tests and we can see that only the encryption test fails that was also failing before. So let's take a quick look at the test. The only thing it does is retrieving the contents of a file called password.txt that lives in the root of the code base. And then it asserts that the content is my underscore secret underscore password. Even though the file currently exists in the code base, it won't exist in Docker because it is ignored in the Docker ignore file. So that our tests won't find the file and fail. So how can we make it available? Well, the file is actually encrypted and we can see that we have a corresponding password.txt.secret file. 
which indicates that the file is encrypted via git secret. This encrypted file is actually available in the Docker image, but we need to decrypt it before we can run the test. So let's quickly recap what's happening here. We have the code base in the Docker image that contains an encrypted file. When the container starts, we need to make the secret GPG file available to the container with a bind mount, and then we can decrypt the file and run the tests. This is actually quite nice because we can keep all secrets directly in the Docker image and in the code base, and we only need a single GPG secret file to do the decrypt. I mentioned in the beginning that for the CI system, we want a password protected secret GPG key file. And in preparation, I have already created such a file. The password is simply 1234567.8. We will copy the file to secret GPG so that it is picked up by the gpg init command that we know from the git secret video from before. It imported the protected key that we've just seen. And that also means that we won't be able to simply run secret decrypt because we are prompted to enter a password. Instead, I need to run secret decrypt with password and then pass the password as a variable. And this works as expected. I could also add this variable directly in the make init command so it becomes a shared variable and I don't have to enter it again. Now I can run make secret decrypt with password but I don't have to specify the password once again. Since the file is now decrypted, I should be able to run the tests and see no errors any longer. And finally, everything works. What did we expect from our CI pipeline in the beginning of the video? Well, we wanted to build our CI Docker images, start them via Docker Compose, decrypt the secrets, run the QA tools and run the tests. All of those things are already existing as make targets. And we can now use them for different CI service providers. Locally, we'll see that in a second, but we can also use them in GitHub Actions or on GitLab pipelines. For the local execution, I've created a corresponding script Dot local minus ci dot sh. And in this script, we will first copy over the gpg key to the correct location. We will then initialize make with a ci environment, run docker build, start the docker setup, initialize gpg, decrypt the secrets, run the QA tests, though we don't want to exit immediately if those tests fail, because we also want to make sure that the tests are run as well. So we will store a potential failure in a variable, but we don't exit the script. We will then wait until the MySQL service is ready to accept connections, execute the tests, and finally evaluate if anything failed. So if the QA tools or the tests failed. Let's run the script. And examine the output. So it starts by initializing the shared variables. Then it's building the Docker setup with the correct CI environment. Start it, initialize GPG, decrypt the secrets, run the QA tools, wait until the MySQL service becomes available, run the tests, and finally print success. A local execution is nice, but what we really want to achieve is executing our tests and QA tools on an external system, for example, on GitHub Actions. We can enable that by creating a .github folder, a workflow directory, and then a YAML file that contains the workflow configuration for the action. We start by giving it a name, and we want to run this action on each push to a specific branch, in this case, the branch of this tutorial. It will use an Ubuntu base image, check out the code base, retrieve the secret GPG key that is stored as a secret in GitHub, install Docker and Docker Compose, initialize make and build the Docker setup, start it, initialize GPG and decrypt the secrets, run the QA tools, wait until MySQL is ready, run the tests, and finally evaluate if everything was successful. Let's take a look at an actual CI run on GitHub Actions. For that, we will create a new empty commit with the message trigger CI build for video and we will push it to the GitHub repository. This will start a new build in GitHub Actions. So I'm switching to the Actions tab. I'm opening the corresponding build and it will now go through all the steps that we've just seen in the file.
And finally, the job is successful. Now let's do the same thing for GitLab. We need to create a file called .gitlab-ci.yaml and this is the configuration file for the GitLab pipelines. We first need to define the stages that we want to run, then define those stages individually. We only want to run this pipeline automatically when we push to a specific branch and we will use a Docker base image with a Docker in Docker service installed. We need that to run Docker Compose on GitLab. For GitLab, we have also configured a secret variable in GitLab itself that we now use to populate the secret GPG key. And then we provision the machine. So we install Docker, for example, initialize make, build the Docker setup, start the setup, initialize GPG, decrypt the secrets, run the QA tools, wait for MySQL to become available, run the tests, and finally evaluate if everything went successfully. Now let's see it in action by pushing to GitLab. And we can see that the pipeline has started. We'll now take a look. And the pipeline is now running and succeeded as expected. We need to store the GPG secret key as well as the corresponding password in GitHub or in GitLab as secrets because those should never be part of the repository itself. And in GitHub, this is configured via settings, actions, and then as action secrets. And here I have created the corresponding secrets for the key and the password. On GitLab, secrets are configured via settings, CICD, then expand the variable section. And then you can either upload a file or a simple text variable. And I've done that here with our GPG file and the GPG password. You can find a much more detailed article about this video on my blog under pascalando.com, CI pipeline, Docker, PHP, GitLab, GitHub, as well as all parts of the series under Docker PHP tutorial. All the files are provided in the official GitHub repository under Docker PHP tutorial, in this case under the part seven branch. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching.